Hey guys, welcome back to the Design Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Uh, surprise in store today, guys. I've brought you along to my high school and this is where I teach. This is my full-time job. Uh, I'm standing in front of the CNC workshop at Harvester Technical College, guys. Now, if you don't know a lot about education uh, in Australia, especially in Victoria, the state where I live, uh, this is a very specialised high school which caters for senior levels only, so year 10, 11 and 12. And uh, we, we facilitate all different sorts of trade training out of here, uh, pre-vocational trade training, that is, so pre-apprenticeship pre level. Uh, we teach carpentry, electrical, engineering, plumbing, uh, just to name, name a few there off the bat. But let's go inside of the CNC workshop today, guys, because I want to talk to you about uh, tool numbers and tool pockets. So come on, let's go into the CNC workshop. Okay guys, so to show you today what I was talking about in the video before about um, tool numbers and pockets, in a machine like the Haas, which has a double arm up in here, guys, tool numbers and tool pockets have no correlation whatsoever. Uh, I can stick any tool in any pocket, the controller will keep uh, track of which, where that tool is, where it's stored in a different pocket, and the reason that is because this double arm, it can pull a tool out of say pocket six and put a tool on the spindle and put the other tool back in the same pocket that that previous tool came out of. Now to demonstrate this, I've got tool one in the spindle and I'm gonna call up tool 25. Now I've got three cameras shooting this at the moment. I've got one beneath me, one the main camera and I've got another Sony up the top here. Now you'll see that my probe is in pocket six and it's right up the top. Now, I'm running this controller in the parameters, guys. I've got it dialed down to 50%. You've got to remember, this is an educational machine. We are not in production. Uh, it's a high school, and we don't want to flog the death out of our CNC machines because we got this grant money to buy these machines, and we'll never have the money again to replace them. So we treat them with a lot of respect. Uh, they do get work. They just don't sit here to look pretty, but they do work, but we don't bash them to death. So I've got the, in the parameters in here, I've got the rapids turned down to 50. So this tool change will be at 50%, okay? Okay guys, so I've got tool one in the spindle and I need to call up tool 25. Now you'll notice that tool 25 is currently living in pocket six. The controller knows where the tool is at all times. So let's type it in. We're in MDI here, okay? Tool number 25. I'm gonna press the ATC forward button. Now on the SOIL, I'd have to go log in and then execute it with a cycle start. The Haas control is just that little bit more simple. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love this stuff to death, okay? Bloody fantastic, okay? Why, why would you stand there manually putting in tools every day? I love so it. I'm gonna uh, turn this mill off now. I'm gonna head back home and show you the same thing on my soil, um, just to give you a bit of a, a different uh, view, from, a different perspective of things. Um, before I do that though, I need to park this milling machine up. I'm gonna put it away into an empty pocket, so I'll come over here. I can see that pocket 14 is empty, and I want that tool put away, so I'll put it in pocket 14. Really simple, guys. I'm just gonna MDI P, P for pocket 14, ATC forward, that tool's gonna to go away now. Okay, now I'm gonna park the milling machine up, guys, and uh, I like to park it up properly just to take the weight off. Uh, I don't leave it over one side for any long periods of time. I park it right at the back, I jog the Z down a little bit as well, guys. So hand jog, uh, we wanna go X axis. I want to go to the uh, fastest the way it will go in the, in the jogging mode, in the step direction mode, I should say. 
There we have it. Just going to jog that Z down a little bit. Just take a little bit of weight off the column. E-stop it. And power off. There we have it, guys. How simple is that? It's a beautiful machine. I love this machine. Uh, I dread the day when I stop being a teacher because I'll really miss this machine. It's a beautiful piece of uh, equipment. Okay, well, let's uh, head back to my place and I'll show you on the soil. Okay, so I'm back at home in my little home garage CNC shop. Let's turn the soil on and let's uh, compare and contrast between the Haas tool change with a double arm and the soil tool change with an umbrella, okay? Now, the previous difference, guys, was the Haas had the double arm, which means the tool could go into any pocket. Unfortunately, with an umbrella tool changer, that is not the case. Tool one will always go back into pocket one, okay? Unless you work outside of the tool changer for high numbers past 12, okay? But I won't be doing it here in this video. So let's turn the machine on. The first thing I need to do, guys, is to turn on uh, my phase change converter. I've got the two both cameras set up again, uh, just to compare with the Haas. I've got my good Sony down below here shooting up into the tool changer, and I've got you guys watching me on the A7. Righto, so I'm gonna call up tool one, guys. We're gonna watch the tool change here, and just, just take a look at the speed and difference of machine. Keep in mind the Haas was running at 50%, okay, on that tool change. It's capable of double that speed. Okay, we're gonna call up tool one, and uh, just check out the difference, guys. Uh, into MDI, we've got to press MDI on the screen. Up here now, I'm going to just delete T11 and put in tool one uh, and log in and cycle start. And we can watch this tool change in action. Cool. So, guys, that's tool one. What I'm going to do now is call up the direct opposite tool that. So, the pocket number on my machine, guys for that one is pocket number seven. So we'll call that tool up and just have a look at the difference in speed between a, an umbrella tool changer and a sidearm tool changer like I showed you, okay? So back into MDI mode, delete tool seven, log in, cycle start and here we go. So the carousel's got to go all the way around and to pick up that tool. And there we have it, guys. That pretty much concludes today's video. So overall, what did you think? Uh, what tool changer would suit you in your home workshop or in your business for that matter? Um, obviously, the double arm is really good. I, I do know Sol do actually make a machine with a double arm. Um, I believe there's one X7 in existence, so mine's an X7, and that belongs to Paul Frink over in Cape Cod, who's also the, um, the manager of the Soul Facebook group, okay? So guys, Paul's got a machine coming with a double arm, so I look forward to seeing how fast Paul's machine changes tools. Uh, Mr. Zushow has sent me video of the Soul double arm in action. It's pretty quick. I, I, don't, think it's on, I don't think it's as fast as the Haas, um, but anyway... Who knows? Um, would be good too. Uh, Jason, my good friend over there in the States, who's got the Haas as well. Jason's got the Super Mini Mill too, like the one we have at school, but Jason's got the Umbrella Tool Changer. He doesn't have the Carousel one. So uh, basically, guys, the difference that... What's, what sums it up for me, guys, with the double arm is it's faster in production. So if you're actually machining for a living, guys, you, every time you wait for a tool change, you're wasting money or you're losing money, okay? Um, it's just like every time you open that door, guys. If you're not pulling out a completed part every time you open that door, you're losing money, okay? And that was, that was some really good advice that I heard early, early on from Titan Gilroy. Um, so, guys, it's faster. The double arm's way quicker. In Fusion, you can have what's called uh, look ahead or read ahead. So f when Fusion's uh, running its program and say it knows, say you're doing a facing operation, but then it knows you're going to come in with a 10 mil end mil and take out a pocket or do adaptive clearing. It will call in a in a carousel double arm, it will call that tool up before that facing cycle's finished. That carousel will index around and that tool will be sitting in that pocket ready to go. So when that machine stops, it goes up, changes tool and, and back again. Now the Haas at school, I believe, uh, if it's on full rapids, uh, you know, in the parameters, I think it's just over a second, maybe 1.1 second, uh, Chip to chip, don't quote me on that, okay? It's a bit of, bit of a while since I've done it. 
Um, of course, we've got the Haas dial back a little bit at school, so it'd be a little bit longer than that, but it's way faster than the umbrella tool changer. Because as you can see, if I had tool one in and I wanted that other tool, there's a you've got to wait for a little bit of time for that tool to index around to get ready to do the tool change. So, oh look, I hope you learned something today, guys. I hope that answered your questions. I, I tried my best to answer it for you. It was a question raised earlier by one of my viewers said, hey, what's the difference between an umbrella and a carousel tool changer? So uh, anyway, guys, look, thanks for joining in. Um, and I'll see you back here uh, when I can, when I can get around to it. Be bloody careful around machinery, please, guys. And always remember, wear your safety boots, all right? Okay, as you drop something on the floor. Okay. MDI, tool 10, ATC forward or ATC reverse, either one will command a tool change. Okay, Aaron, you're gonna have to do that again. All right, because you're a dickhead. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this gives me a robot chubby. I love this stuff.